Greetings and welcome to Conversations With. I'm your host, H. Lee Tony, Executive Director of the Miami-Dade College Carrie P. Meek Entrepreneurial Education Series. Today, we're continuing our talks with entrepreneurs from throughout South Florida, and I'm delighted today to have as my guest, Mr. John Weich, who is the founder and CEO of Trash Co. Thank you for having me. John, welcome to Conversations With. Thank you. So tell us, John, how did you find your way into the waste management industry? Well, basically, I'm a police sergeant as well. And one evening, some kids had spray painted cars. So I'm using King police instinct I have. Uh, I think it was dumpster time, so they came to pick up the trash. And I figured that if they spray painted the cars, that they were going to take the cans and put inside of the dumpsters. Um, so basically, I had everyone go around and lifting garbage cans hmm. and found out after the 50th one, that <laughs> no one cleans garbage cans. After the 50th after can. After the 50th can. Yeah. I think I realized after the 10th can. Mm -hmm. So after smelling trash for weeks in, um, you know, in my nose from the stink and the bacteria, the maggots, I realized that no one was cleaning the garbage can, and that's how Trash Go was born. It's a dirty job, but somebody has to do it, right? I concur. My goodness. So you, based upon your work as a police officer, bumped into an industry or an idea that led to the formation of your company. Yes. So where'd you start? How do you develop a market for that? Because I can't imagine there are too many competitors in this, in this arena of waste management. Yes? For no? the first month after that, I realized that there was none. And then I got on the Internet and realized that there are in Europe. It is very prominent in Europe. Mm. And there were some companies also in California that was doing the business. The only difference was they were using recycled water. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to follow through that. But that's like you washing your dishes, and then you go over the next door and wash your dishes in someone else's dishwater. So basically, this is residential garbage can cleaning where yes. you started. Yes. So when we all take our waste can out on trash day, uh, you provide the service to residential customers, at least that's where you started, right. of cleaning um, garbage cans in, peop in people's homes. Yes, we would come yeah. the same day that your garbage can is being dumped. We basically follow the garbage trucks. Mm -hmm. And once they empty them, we would come by and we would actually clean it and sanitize it. The key to what we would do, we actually sanitize the can. And once it's sanitized, we sit it back, we put our sticker on it, and you come home and you have a fresh smelling uh, garbage can. Now tell me, was this your first foray into entrepreneurship or had you done some things before this? No, I think I've been on entrepreneurship since I was in the third grade. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a noun later king, if you know what a noun later is. <laughs> noun later candy, yes, one of my favorites. Noun later yes. candy. I was the king of noun laters. <laughs> uh, I used to sell noun laters at school. I don't condone it, but that's what I used <laughs> to do. Uh, and the the key to that was just have good clients. And I had good clients, I had a great personality, and I used to sell now later sneaker bars, and I think it was very successful. Oh, so you started in candy, and you started in third grade. Yes. And where'd you take it from there? Because I know you had a football career too at the yes, university I, and the NFL level. Yes, I was blessed to be able to get a scholarship at Florida State University from a small kid from Thomasville, Georgia. That meant everything. Mm. And I thought Tallahassee was the biggest place in the world because <laughs> I'm from a small town. And, and ironically, I've never gone to Tallahassee in my whole 18 years. I've never been to Tallahassee. It's 35 miles away. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but I was blessed enough to get the scholarship, uh, got a degree in economics, uh, graduated, and was blessed enough to, at the same time to get a, um, a, a professional career mm. In the NFL. In the NFL. Mm -hmm. I was drafted by San Diego Chargers, and I, unfortunately, at the same time, I was cut after the th for the third grade games that began, mm -hmm. but I was able to do it and continue to the World League, okay, I and I played that. one year in the World League. How has being an athlete prepared you for entrepreneurship? Discipline. Being punctual. Uh, and being an athlete at Florida State, being a... Um, getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning for mat, mat drills, you don't get there at 5.01. You definitely have to be there at 5 o'clock. So being punctual and being able to, the discipline part of football, the you have to be a team player, I think that prepared me the most. 
So how has your company grown? You've been in business now five years. As you said, you have a career that's still ongoing in yes. law enforcement. So you're doing this in all of your free time. You are really don't have any free time because <laughs> you're helping to run Trashco. So right. what does your staffing look like? Who helps you get this accomplished? We have uh, from five to eight employees. Mm -hmm. And when I say five to eight, the eight is when we have larger projects. We have at least 15 people trained to do what we do. And people say, well, how are you trained to clean a garbage can? Well, we do more commercial now. A uh, majority of our business right now is commercial. And when they call, you, we have to clean a garage. We'll take that garage. We have to have more employees. So it's, you have to be able to adapt. Um, I do have another career, but at the same time, uh, trash is a career as well. Yes, sir. So I'm blessed because I'm a senior sergeant, so my, I, I can pick my own schedule. So with that, it's easy to run trash at the same time. Okay, so you started with residential, yes. and then your company grew into more commercial clients. Yes. Good, good. Well, we're going to take a break in a few minutes, but I think that, that the scaling of a business is something that really challenges a lot of entrepreneurs. You started with uh, something you encountered on your job. You started with a residential focus, but you scaled your company to be able to serve more commercial clients. And right there is a bridge, is a story that we want to tap into for other entrepreneurs. How do you identify new markets? How do you scale your company? You mentioned that you can staff up to as many as eight mm -hmm. to when you have larger, more commercial clients. And that's not always a journey that entrepreneurs are able to navigate successfully. So give me one word that you think helped you to be able to navigate that, and then we'll talk more about it after the break. Discipline. Discipline. Okay, good. Thank you, John. Yeah. And right after the break, we'll come back uh, to Conversations With. Cool programs for hot jobs. Let Miami-Dade College jumpstart your career. We offer bachelor's degrees in film and TV production, electronics engineering, supervision and management, and nursing. Or choose from 300 other programs. With our flexible course schedules, you can take classes during the day, evening, weekend, or online. For more info, visit mdc.edu or call 305-237-8888. Get the knowledge and training for today's in-demand jobs. Register now. Welcome back to Conversations with, I'm your host, H. Lee Tony from Miami-Dade College, Meek Entrepreneurial Education Center. And my guest today is John Weich, CEO and founder of Trashco. And before we took a break, we landed on this issue of discipline. And we talked about that specifically because it was so key to your being able to scale and migrate your business from a largely residential base to a more commercial base. So tell me how you made the decision to make the leap from residential to commercial and the role that discipline played in being able to do that. You would know when it's time to move on. Uh, we found, I find out the hard way. And you, you ask someone, have you ever had any failures? Well, you would know when to move on. And we were bouncing from town to town, from city to city, from municipality to municipality, and finally realized that we were doing that, but we were losing money because of the fact of what they were paying for wasn't covering the gas costs. Absolutely. So we realized that you, it, was, it was another niche that was there, and a client basically calls up and asks us, do we clean dumpsters? And we never thought about it, but we had all the equipment to do, to nice. do the job. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how we was able to move forward because we did the one dumpster, and that was basically better than a whole week of cleaning the garbage can. So I'm going to push a little bit more. You moved to commercial. A client called you with this opportunity. Yes. You realized that it was something that you had the capacity to do. So one of your major retail clients, does that mean you get all of those stores in that area? Or how do you go about getting those retail clients? Um, when you get a retail client, some of them you can get all of them at once. But majority of them, each store have their own budget. Mm -hmm. So you basically have to go and resell. But a lot of it is referrals. 
because once you do a good job at one retail, they will call the manager at the next retail store, and it makes it a lot easier for you to walk in the door and get the contract. Very good. So I can imagine that since you're part of the waste management industry, that relationships with waste haulers and waste management companies are essential. Yes, definitely. How does that work? For you? Especially with us. We, we have to be there basically when the dumpsters are emptied. Uh, and when the compactors are taken to the yard and get emptied as well. So we have to have a relationship with them because time is of essence. We, if they pick up at 9 o'clock, we need to be there at 9 o'clock in order to clean. Because not only do we clean the compactor, we clean the pad as well. So when they move it, we clean it. When they come back, we clean the inside and outside of the actual dumpster or compactor. Good, good. And so you're really more of a B2B business because as a consumer, I never think about, or most of us never think about this aspect of our experience right. unless it goes really wrong, right? right? Yes, if, if, yes. if it comes to the consumer's attention, something has gone really wrong. So your relationships are definitely B2B. Yes, it is yeah. definitely business to business. Uh -huh. uh, the consumer know about it. Mm -hmm. They don't think about it. The majority of what we had to do was educate. We had to educate our clients on this is why you should do this. Because you got to think, everybody think that garbage cans, dumpsters, compactors, they should stink. No, they shouldn't. If you ever go through a drive through a major chain, the dumpster is right there at the drive through You smell it, but you think, oh, it's supposed to stink. It's a dumpster. We're trying to change that philosophy. And you say this is very more prevalent in Europe than it is in the United States? Yes. In Europe, they, it's, it's very uh, prevalent there. Uh, it's coming to the United States since we've started. Uh, this is our fifth year. There have been about three companies that come by and do the residential garbage cans. Uh, for whatever reason, they was not successful in doing so. Uh, but when people know about it and they feel like that it is profitable, they'll start doing it. What, is it, what did it take to start your company? Startup budget, resources, how did you start Trash? A lot of research. Uh, and research is everything. You can't just jump out and say, I'm going to do this because you have a great idea. You need to research for one, see if anyone's doing it. Two, how successful they are at doing it. And three, if you can make it better. And that's what we was able to do. We did all three of those, and we was able to make the, the, the process better. Uh, we pride on our process. Anyone can clean a dumpster, yes. But the process of cleaning and make sure it's efficiently and effectively, that's what we basically made good. Okay, good. And um, you talked about failure. Yes. And a lot of people are concerned about two things. One, so that's so why I asked about startup. They think I'm a, I have to have a lot of money to start up a business, and therefore I cannot start up a business. And they don't always realize. They see the successes, right? Mm -hmm. They see you. Oh, you got corporate clients. It's great. Talk to me about some of the difficulties that you've, because this is a largely uh, student audience that right. we're aiming for and talking about conversations with. Because what we want to do is unpack for them the process of entrepreneurship so they can kind of be disabused of this notion that it's a straight line from start to success, right? It's right. really a winding path. So did you have to have a lot of money to start this company? And, and what have been some of the more challenging aspects? You don't have to have a lot of money. You just have to have a great idea and have great people supporting you that is able to do the research and make sure you're successful. It's not how much money you put into it. It's more so time. If you uh, everybody want to get rich scheme. They want to get rich fast. I want to start a company and in three months from now you're going to get this large check. That didn't happen for us. We're, this is our fifth year and we're finally now, you know, where we're supposed to be mm. and we're growing more so. For a, a young entrepreneur, just have a great idea. You don't have to have a lot of money, but use your money wisely. Know where to place that money. Whether you're placing it in marketing, whether you're placing it in operations, wherever you're placing it, just make sure it's it's going to make you successful. Who helped to create this three-year-old entrepreneur? Do you think you were just born an entrepreneur? Uh, did you become an entrepreneur? And what do you think were the most critical factors or mentors or people in your life who influenced you in this direction? People say you were you, you born a salesman. Uh, and I, I, I tell people I'm not, a, I'm not a born salesman. I think I'm a born entrepreneur. I always found ways to make money. And no matter what it was, how small, if I bought a nine later for 25 cents and I sold for 50 cents, I thought I was successful. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have mentors, people that support your ideas. You, you, before you can bounce stuff, and all, bounce stuff off of them, mm -hmm. you have to have mentors to be able to 
say I'm doing this and then they say, well, no, you may want to do it a different way or try it this way. Because as an entrepreneur, you don't know everything. You have to have people around you that is able to help you and also guide you in the right direction. And that's the success story for an entrepreneur. Good, good. What do you think um, is next for your company? Are there a few things you feel comfortable sharing about where do you see on the horizon and reasons why you think people should be looking at the waste management industry, not to encourage a competition, <laughs> but you know, it is one of those areas that people don't that are not that is not top of mind to people right. about opportunities, but we rely on the waste management industry so much to make our lives a lot more comfortable right. and a lot healthier and a lot safer. I've been in different entrepreneurship businesses and tell us about it. Which ones? Um, I was in construction. I was in um, property, buying properties and flipping them. Mm -hmm. And during that process, the market crashed. So I, I thought I was the baby Trump, <laughs> pretty much. And, but you realize that when the market crashed, what do you do from that point? How do you bounce back? And the way we got into the, the trash industry was find something that is recession proof. Your trash always has to be picked up. Uh, unless you're going to deal with that smell for life, you're going to get it clean eventually if you have to go out there with a water hose and try to do it. So we found a niche that is not, say, 100% recession proof, but it will be able to sustain if something happens to the economy. And that's, you know, that's what we look at right now. You're a serial entrepreneur, so we're going to talk about that when we come back from our second break. Uh, because your first experience and your second experience continue to buoy you along to continue to be entrepreneurial. So yes. we're going to talk about that as well. So I hope you'll stay with us when we come back. Uh, we'll continue our conversation with John Weich. Fresh thinking is being served at Miami-Dade College. Create your own recipe for success in the evolution of food culture at the Miami Culinary Institute. Learn the skills you need to jumpstart your career in the culinary arts. Turn green into gourmet and celery into salary. Miami Culinary Institute. Food. Culture. Innovation. Visit us at MiamiDadeCulinary.com. Register now. Miami Culinary Institute. Welcome back to Conversations With. I'm H. Lee Tony. Thank you for staying with us. And we're talking today with John Weich, CEO and founder of Trash Co. You are a serial entrepreneur. Okay. You said you started when you were in third grade selling candy, uh, and you've had multiple businesses up to now. So you didn't let any initial success or failure dissuade you. You knew you were on to something and that this was a valuable process being an entrepreneur. What drives you? I think I'm self-motivated. I like to see the end. And people say, well, what do you mean by you like to see the end? If a cup of water fall off the table, I'm going to get the mop. I'm not going to try to catch it because nine times out of ten, you're going to splash it in more places and you have to have more cleanup. So I'm one of those people I like to see the end. I like to see when a dirty dumpster becomes a clean dumpster. Mm -hmm. And I think that is my, my motivation. That's my drive. Good. And how long have you been in business? Because you said this is your fifth year. Yes. Uh, and most people are looking for more immediate gratification than might be offered with entrepreneurship. How long was it until you started to pay yourself or you could afford a staff? Wow. Uh, <laughs> the first year, it was concept on paper. Mm -hmm. And then someone asked us, can you come do a demo? Uh-oh. <laughs> that was that uh-oh moment mm -hmm. because we didn't have the tools to do the demo. So then we have to go and get the, the, the tools that we needed. The, the second year, again, our thing more so with education. We had to educate people and what we were doing, why we were doing it, and why is it important. Why we don't want to touch a dumpster that has E. coli, salmonella, and seven other diseases that I don't know how to pronounce. We had to be able to educate them that. So now they know, okay, it could be a, a good thing for them cleaning it. So now we're going to allow them to do it. So I would say third year 
before we I even seen a penny. When you see that first check, you're like, oh my goodness, they paid me that much to do this? Mm -hmm. Once you see that, then, but it takes a while. It's not no over, uh, overnight success. It's not a year. Some people say it takes five years for you to actually see. To us, it took the three to four years. But you have to continue to drive. You have to continue that drive. And when you get bored or you get think you're going to fail, go do more research. Find out what other people are doing and try to adapt to that. And if it works, put it to your business. If it don't, leave it out and continue the research. What's your goal? I had a student in my office uh, a few days ago, and she said, I want to be on the cover of Forbes magazine. <laughs> and you hear people say that a lot of times, and you just kind of blow it off a little bit because you don't think that they really get what that means. Right. But this student totally got it, and I totally believed that she's going to be on the cover of Forbes right. magazine. So what's next for Trash Co.? I mean, are we talking waste management level of a company? Is that what you're after? Or what, what do you see as the future for your company? What are you hoping for? I'm hoping for a step-by-step -step progress. I'm not hoping for tomorrow I'm going to rule the whole United States in cleaning trash can and dumpsters. Now, if it happens, it's going to happen step-by-step, -step, and I'm going to be ready for that because the worst thing you can do as an entrepreneur is say you can do something and you don't do it. That's the worst thing you can possibly do. Uh, I'll give you an example. We, a, a retailer asked us, what, what state do you want to clean the dumpsters? You could have said Florida, you could have said Georgia, you could have said North Carolina, but we said one state. We only want to do, we're putting a bid in for this one state, Florida. And so they was like, why? I said, because we're not ready for Florida and Georgia. So once you, you, you realize if you want to be a successful business, take your time getting there. It's, you may not see the money as fast, but you'll be in business longer. And that would be my advice with that. What's your passion? We tell students to pursue their passion. Right. What's your passion? Entrepreneurship. I really think that's my passion from selling the nine laters to having, I mean, I mentioned the cell phone pager stores, mm -hmm. uh, the construction, the property flipping. I love being working for myself. Now, with that being said, you have to be very disciplined in doing so. You can't wake up at 12 noon working for yourself and say, oh, by the way, I'm going to go to work now. No, you work harder. You, my job that I have now, that's my career, which is being a police officer, I get off at 6 o'clock. I don't have to think about my job anymore until the next day. With Trash Co., it's a 24-hour process. You wake up 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I, I, I got to go write this down right now because that's your passion. That's what you want to do. Now, your career is your passion as well. And I tell people, if you want to be an entrepreneur, it may be better to go work for someone in the beginning so you can learn, what the, get all the information you possibly can, and then go out and be that you know, entrepreneur. Do, you can still be doing it, but do it part-time until you're ready to go out in the real world because it is a challenge. So you studied economics at Florida State. Yes. What could you have benefited from at the university level to help you in your pursuits as an entrepreneur right now? So I'm asking you to kind of do two things at once, kind of look back at your experience right. as a student, and what do you think colleges and universities can do for students to help them to tap into their entrepreneurial selves and to help them to, to realize that entrepreneurship is possible for them? If you want to be a doctor, you most likely want to be taught by a doctor. So if you want to be a great entrepreneur, find an entrepreneur. Because they're going to tell you the hands-on experience. Um, yes, there's a lot of information in books. There is um, a lot of information on the Internet. But the best source is a person that's been there, that has you know, worked hard, that eating those cans of sardines because <laughs> you know, he had to pay his payroll first. When you find those people, I think that's the best thing for an entrepreneur or a student is to have another entrepreneur teach them the way. Hmm. Good. Well, we're going to be calling on you okay. uh, to help us do exactly that. Okay. Uh, because, again, these shows are an instructional tool. Yes. Uh, we are delighted when people like yourselves 
come on and tell your story about how they have done it because a, the big part of entrepreneurship education is really unmasking, like unveiling right. exactly how did you do this and you weren't just actually born at the top uh, and right. you didn't start out at the top of the mountain of whatever industry or field it is that you've decided to pursue. And I am I think it's gonna be very intriguing for our students to think about, you know, something that's a part of our everyday lives, like trash and waste, but to really think about where there are opportunities in companies like this. They're recession proof, uh, highly successful. I mean some of the most successful companies in the country are involved in the waste management yes. industry. I mean our our football team used to be owned by one of the leaders, the Heisingas, yes, yes. Uh, who are, if not the largest, one of the largest waste management com com companies in the United States. Yes. So uh, there are a lot of opportunities there and a lot of lessons that we can unpack from your conversation. So thank you so much for You're being welcome. with us today. I enjoyed talking to you. I think it's going to be very important for our students and um, we'll certainly look for opportunities to invite you back. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank Thanks you. for having me. You're Delighted. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. And I hope you'll come back and tune in for our next episode of Conversations with I'm your host, H. Lee Tony. Take care and have a great day.